And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. And Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and Rock Cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod Rick Maxa. We're in the Mighty 1090 Studios for our last show of 2015. Yes, indeed, number 104 of 104 for 2015. And we have a great way to wrap things up for this year. Jim Salazar, our lobster guru. He's also a kayak guru and more. You stay tuned. This is Southern California Sport Fishing Voices. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. The new Shimano Torium HG is here, and you'll be able to experience this fantastic reel now at your local Shimano dealer. The new Torium is up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and is tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The new Shimano Torium HG is not only better on the outside, the inside is amazing with a cross carbon drag providing up to 24 pounds of drag pressure from a star drag reel. It has a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears. The machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easy to crank in the big fish. The new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control. Available in three sizes, the Torium HG is the next evolution in compact, rigid, and powerful saltwater star drag reels. Get it now at your local Shimano dealers. I'm very excited to share my experience with the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 touchscreen chart plotter and sonar unit I just installed on my boat. I've been a Simrad electronics fan for many years and always enjoyed the ease of use and incredible technology. Last year I installed the new 4G broadband radar and could not believe the difference. So this year I upgraded to the new NSS Evo 2 and it's amazing with an easy to use tablet style interface that's fresh but familiar the Simrad NSS Evo 2 combines a multi-touch screen with push-to-select rotary dial for precision control and speedy response. The core of any marine electronic for me is how it marks fish. And the new NSS Evo 2 with built-in sonar hub sounder technology, including chirp and structure scan, can't be beat. Now, the true test is whether I need to pick up the manual to figure it out. And guess what? The new Simrad gear is so easy, I didn't need it. There is a lot more to the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 system, I'd like to tell you, but best to just go to your local Simrad dealer and check it out. Or see simrad-yachting.com. For more details. It was another awesome year for fishing in San Diego, and it seems to still be going strong. I've talked to people that continue to get into tuna and yellowtail offshore. It was another awesome year for Ford, too. Once again, Ford is America's favorite brand. Just take a look at last year's sales figures. It's right there in black and white. If the car you're driving is six, seven, eight years old, it's really time to get into something new because the technology in these new Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs is nothing short of impressive. You wouldn't want a cell phone with eight-year-old technology, would you? So why keep driving a car with old technology? Now's the time to stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer and check out the latest innovations and designs, like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on your new F-150. You just turn a little knob on the dash and it steers your trailer exactly where you want it to go. Trust me, backing in your boat will never be easier. Learn more at SanDiegoCountyFord.com or just stop by any San Diego County Ford dealer. They'll be glad to hook you up. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. I can't believe the end of the year is upon us. And like you said, man, what a perfect way to end it. Yeah, how about that? This will be our 104th broadcast for 2015. We got them all in because the holidays didn't fall, nice. uh, fell into the right way. And, and uh, it's been a real pleasure working, of course, with my buddy Rick. Oh, man. Me and too, all the great guests and all the great sponsors we have. We're very, very grateful for a tremendous year. And we'll be back for another year. You better believe year. it. Yeah, we're right, right here. 
And uh, a great guest to wrap things up here for 2015 is Jim Salazar. Good morning, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hi, guys. Thank you, uh, Rick. Thank you, Pete. Oh, yeah, I love this Dan. show. I listen to it every every <laughs> week. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jim. We sure appreciate all your support and all you do no for doubt. fishermen in general and especially lobster fishermen because without a voice like yours that's knowledgeable, uh, I don't know that we'd have some of the regulations that uh, – we have right now that are in favor of recreational lobster guys. No doubt. Thank you, guys. I, I do Thank my you. best, and uh, with a little help from El Stukovic from the uh, San Diego Anglers, he's been a lot of help, too. Al's a good guy. Yeah, El has definitely been there for me at the at the meetings. But, uh, yeah, I love standing up for uh, for our rights. Uh, it, you know, the commercial guys shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be the only ones to be able to get out there and get lobsters. Yeah, uh, and that's always confused me, and I have a lot of good friends that are commercial lobster guys. I I don't understand why there's a conflict between recreational and commercial guys. It, I, you know, it, we both want the same resource, and, yeah. and you know, and, and it's, it's, it's a their, valuable it's, resource. It's their livelihood, yeah. and it's and a, it's an expensive livelihood. A very, very expensive uh, resource. You know, it's it's amazing. Uh, Captain Kids, it was forty one ninety nine when I was there the other day for a live one. I think uh, wow. Point Loma had them for thirty six ninety nine for yeah. live spinies. They're not even keeping them in the tank. Most of those are. Uh, our special order. Yeah, and and it's a traditional kind of holiday sure thing is, yeah. for a lot of cultures, and they're selling them. It is at my house. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, especially especially the way you catch them. <laughs> I'll bet but, it is. But um, but you things are good now. I think that um, you know, kind of more we're more working together now on the on these uh, on these conflicts. Well, than, you know, when than when apart when the department got us together to do the uh, fishery management plan for lobster. Um, their biggest goal was to get the the commercial guys to get a, a, a sea, you know a trap limit on them. So uh, you know their all the other goal was to get us to work together and to get us to work yeah. together to get that trap uh, limit for them and also to tighten up our regulations a little bit. Um, we already have a, a, a limit a possession limit of seven and we already have uh, gear limits of five or ten five per person yeah. ten maximum on a vessel and uh, you know within that. You know, we're already well controlled. So right. Absolutely. Now, there, one of the things that I am all, all in favor of, because I think that there's a lot of, un, uh, one of the things that, that the commercial guys have to fight with are recreational guys that are selling their lobsters. And so that has been addressed, and that's going to be corrected. Is that, Am I correct? Well, you know, that was one of the biggest issues in all, all the meetings we had was the commercialization of uh, of. Uh, uh, recreational uh, lobster the and you know poachers, poacher, yeah, poachers exactly. basically all it yeah. is man yeah, yeah, it's, totally. it's poachers is all it is and uh, you know it's 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 something that the department is so cash strapped they just don't have the wardens that they need to get out there and it's amazing how little the wardens know when you you know talk to them because they're they have so many different aspects of the resources in southern california and california that they need to pay attention to anything from mountain lions to lobsters so you know they're they're pretty strapped. Yeah. So now they were talking about having you to punch or clip a tail to prove that it was a recreational caught lobster. Is that is that going to happen? Yeah, I think it is. Um, it's one of the uh, LAC Lobster Advisory Committee um, uh, consensus recommendations that we did was to either cut or punch the middle uh, fin on the uh, lobster tail mm -hmm. to prove that it was a recreationally caught lobster. So as that soon way, as you measure it, it's a legal lobster. The requirement's going to be to either have a punch or a clip, depending on the regulations. We'll see what the wording looks like. I'm, I'm dying to see the wording on this stuff. They're going to present uh, the legal package in uh, February. Uh -huh. And uh, when they present that legal package up in Sacramento in February is, uh, is when we'll really see what the regulation wording is like sure. and, and what it's going to come out like. Just a couple other little tweaks, too. The other thing was uh, they were talking about putting uh, your Go ID information on your... Uh, on your uh, on your buoy on your gear. What is Go ID? Go ID is the ID number that you have on all your Department of Fish and Game licenses. Okay. Whether it's a, a report card or, or a license or a hunting license, they is all that have the that same, same all year long. It's the same all year long. Uh, it's and, same and for your same, whole lifetime. It's a unique whole life? it's an, Yeah, it's unique to you. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It is. So yeah, this is part of the new computerized system. Exactly. Right. And yep, it's tied exactly. to your it's tied to your driver's license number. Ah, okay. Um, so uh, they want you to put that Go ID on there. I'm not sure how they're going to word it because so many people use so many different. I mean, you line up ten boats at the la landing, you're going to see ten different ways of rigging. Sure. Yeah. Some guys have water bottles for their floats. Some guys have commercial style floats, which is really the best way to go. Sure. 
But those I like the Salazar method. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I use. But like you say, that that you know poses some unique problems because if I'm going with Pete, Pete's gears in the water, but my go ID is obviously different from his, and we're using his gear and not using my gear. And Joe gonna, Xline brought that up, yeah. and he said, you know, how are we going to word this? How are we going to yeah. deal with this? Because you know, I have ten floats, and I go out with uh, exactly. two guys. Does that mean I'm over on my limit of, of gear for myself? Can they give me a ticket for that? Oh. How are they going to word it? You know? Do I bring five and Pete brings five? And then if we bring a buddy that's a third person, well, now there's not who, yeah. You know, well, I, you? I was guiding for a while and for years, and I had probably 20 nets that I would take out with me with all the, the sure. you know, all the clients. And they all had my name on them. So what would happen in this there day? There you go, age? yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, the, 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 the sense of it would be that, the person with the nets has to be on board, and you could have ten nets. I mean, that would be logical. What if I loan my gear to somebody? Well, then yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to put their number on. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Yeah. You know, the boat next to me, he's going out, and he only has not, five nets. And I want to say, not that I think that's a bad idea. I think it's a good call. I mean, I, I think it is. You know, you know, they should be marked. But, like you say, it certainly poses some issues. You yeah, bottom bottom line here, the divers brought this this one up. Oh, the divers. <laughs> our friends, the divers. <laughs> yes, indeed. So why would they be so concerned about that? I, I don't know. I think uh, um, I think it was uh, Paul uh, that brought it up, and he was uh, concerned because he thought it would help if you had our IDs on there that they would limit the number of people that would go out there and have multiple uh, nets, sets of nets, other than just their five or ten. They would have 15 or 20 nets that they'd go out there and set. Uh, is what he was contending. How are they going to keep track of that once they're in the water or whatever? It's the same way they keep. I don't know how they keep track of the uh, of the 72 hour uh, limit that uh, commercial guys can soak their uh, their stuff. Yeah, it's the same way. They they just can't do it. I mean, there's no way to do it. Yeah. So when are when are all these regulations going to go in? They're talking about having them go into effect in the 1718 season if everything stays on track. If uh-huh. they get the regulations out in February, the regulatory package in February, I think it'll be accepted in so April. So not this next season, but the season after that. Uh 1718, yeah. Yeah, cuz yeah. next season will be 16, 16 17. 17, yeah. Yeah, okay. You got some time. Yeah, plenty of time to time. figure it out. And then the other thing they wanted to do is real simple. They wanted to change the uh, season opener from 12 midnight to uh, daytime opener, 6 a.m. The wardens were pushing for a little bit later, 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. is what they were hoping for because then it would definitely be daylight. And 6 a.m. October end of September, still kind of dark at that time, so they were still kind of concerned about the safety aspect of it. Sure. So that would be 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. 6 a.m. Saturday, Saturday morning. Saturday we morning. We wanted so to move to it. eliminate Friday night. We wanted to move it up to fri- uh, earlier Friday, the daytime hours on Friday. But when we started to do that, the commercial guys said, if you're going to move it up and you're going to get any more additional time, we want to move up our opening. And, and so we, ran, we went the high road and said, fine, we'll yeah. lose half a day. We don't care. It's not yeah. that big a deal. Yeah. Boy. It's right? <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Like, well, and, th- and there's a, why you say thanks to Jim, too, because, I mean, this guy is dealing with all this while we're just sitting back and enjoying good yeah. good lobster hoop netting. He just comes on the radio and tells us about it, <laughs> what, what he, all the work that he's exactly. done. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if it was good lobster hoop netting for yeah. most of you guys yeah. down here this year. You, you guys have really had a tough time down here. Oh, yeah. And, it, and it's tough. really funny because if you look at the Internet, uh, I mean, if you look at the uh, DFG um, – a survey that was done on the bay, it's a pretty much a closed system. They only had a couple lobsters that they tagged and marked that actually went out to Point Loma. Really? Huh. Yeah. Um, I'll have to turn you on to that, uh, that are, survey. It's a pretty I, good I, one. Th- uh, they're hiding till it rains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, well, just like any lobster fishery, I mean, there's guys that are just killer, expert, great hoop netters, and I'm sure they're still getting their limits, but you're right, man. General consensus, it has been a slow season this yeah. year in San Diego. Santa Monica Bay, on the other hand, in the deep water spots, we've just been, I mean, it's wide open. Wide open. Ah, I mean, limits, awesome. limits, limits. And ah, same, awesome. Pete, you know exactly what's, what I'm talking about, because you went to Catalina, right? and it's exactly Catalina the same conditions over at Catalina, yeah. too. You have, there's, lucky we have those deep water areas that the commercial guys can't get into at right. front side of Catalina, and all of Santa Monica Bay from Malibu Point to Rocky Point. Yes. That leaves a lot, a lot of structure. I mean, I go out there and I have my four or five spots, wrecks and reefs and edges of the canyon and stuff that I like hooping. But I look out north towards Malibu and uh, towards uh, Mount Hermosa and Manhattan Beach, and I don't see a boat out there at all. And there are a lot of great artificial reefs out there that nobody's even bothering to hit. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, pretty, pretty unreal. And with that ace line hauler? The ace line hauler. Come on. Yeah. It's, you know, if, you, if you're if you hooping deep and you don't have the ace line hauler, why? 
I don't know how Brandon did it for those yeah, first couple of years, years he was out there. He's a believer easy. now. <laughs> he certainly is. He's a believer. <laughs> it's easy. He was just the boat driver. <laughs> <laughs> so I hate to dwell on, on something that may never happen, but this, this numbering thing, What? how does that play for guys like Brandon that take people out um, to recreational hoop on a commercial, uh, you know, to – to basically, uh, do that's that what I was just talking issue. about. That's yeah. what I was talking about too earlier. I mean, with, you know, if I loan my stuff and when I'm guiding, yeah, same kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't work. Well, with the kayaks, I was kayak guiding, so I would have 20 nets at a time that we'd be taking out there with my name on it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, do you still guide? No, I kind of given that up. Um, yeah, I was thinking about it on the way down here, and it, 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 toward the last few years, it seems like it's been more about less about teaching people. Early on, it was all about teaching people. Everybody was really new to it. But now it seems more about people wanting to buy spots by buying a guided trip. And, you know, my spots are so specific. It's my deep water spots. I mean, I'm doing reefs that are 130, 170. And if they're small, you know, half acre, acre size spots. So, you know, if I give that away to somebody and they come back the next week and then their brother comes back the next week and now there's four and boats on there. Four friends. And yeah, so yeah. that's kind of, I kind of left, kind of backed off on the guiding uh, because uh, I was so uh, specific, yeah, in sure. the, especially in the Santa Monica yeah. Bay. Yeah. Santa Monica Bay and the front side of Catalina are not commercially fished. Is that right? San Diego Bay and San Diego also Bay. Long Beach, San Pedro Harbor. Yeah, all the harbors yep. too, but yep. specifically the only ocean waters yeah, that are Yeah, open waters that are that are available to us and not to the commercial guys are the front side of Catalina and all of Santa Monica Bay from Rocky Point to Malibu Point. Wow, that's a big area. It's a huge area. When we started the uh, uh, the Lobster Advisory Committee meetings, one of the first things the commercial guys uh, brought up was uh, the impact of the uh, MPAs and how they wanted to uh, try and open up front side of Catalina and uh, all of Santa Monica Bay. Luckily for me, uh, the uh, Heal the Bay girls were part of the uh, committee. Uh, one of them, Sarah, was. And uh, as many times as we've butted heads over the MPAs and the MLPA process, she was uh, right up in the commercial guys' faces and talking to them about the deals they had made in the MLPA process and they weren't going to open it up. And I was glad because it, it – avoided my confronting them until and drawing that line in the sand until later on in the process. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, keep, you know. Straight, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, keep it keep it that way but it, I mean, we've got to have some grounds. Right? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah cuz basically when commercial guys put their their uh their traps in, it's game over for the recreation. It's done. They've got their stuff there for days on end yeah. with lots and lots of bait and attractant inside there. They're not fooling around. No, it's okay. That's how they make their living. Yeah, right. it is. Yeah, that's that's all it. Right. But that's the way it works. You know, we got to have some ground. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So let's talk about kayaks, Hobie kayaks in particular. I know you're on the Hobie Pro staff. Uh, you uh, are well connected, and you're getting a new Hobie Island. I understand Adventure Island, the yeah. sailing, the sailing Hobie. It's Tell us six about that. You, you were describing that to Rick yeah, it's and really I. Cool. It sounds so cool. It's really cool. It's got the Mirage Drive in it too. So when you go to, t you guys, are, you sail, Pete. So you know the deal. When you go to tack, you have that little momentum, that little bit of loss of momentum, and you kind of stall sure. for a second there. With a Mirage Drive, when you go, when you're sailing this thing, you can keep pedaling right through the tack. So you can haul butt right through it, and you catch that wind really, really fast. Wow. It's really neat. It's the a wind trimaran, drops. right? It's a 16-foot-long kayak that has two um, uh, pontoons on the side, and they're about 6 foot long on either side. And uh, it's really a really cool system. If you guys watched the Pacific Warrior show, you probably watched uh, the Hawaiian guys out there fishing off of it. And they have uh, uh, the uh, pontoons. What they'll do is they'll just do a quick release on it, kick it in with their leg, and now they have the access to fish from that side of the boat without having anything in the way. Wow. Earlier you asked about the sail. The sail is self-furling. So you just pull that little that rope, and that thing just spins right up on itself, wraps up the sail right there, and it's out of the way so you can continue fishing. And sto it stops the boat pretty quickly. And you can travel some distance yeah, with those exactly. Well, the, there were a bunch of guys that have taken trips over to Catalina and done uh, a few of the boats or the Tandem Islands is yeah. the other one, the Tandem I know version. Ron and Jared Lane uh, went over there, and they did a big Tandem Island trip across the Yeah, Island. it's really, really fun. That's it's crazy. Pretty, pretty seaworthy, right? They're very seaworthy. Yeah. Very seaworthy. I mean, There's, look at what they do in Hawaii. Yeah, oh, exactly. Crap, man. That's if, like, <laughs> if you go to the Hobie uh, uh, website, 
and the Hobie boards, the message boards, they're on the Tandem Island and the island uh, boards. There's actually stories about guys going around Australia and doing uh, cross-ocean trips, and they're pretty incredible. They're pretty wow. incredible boats. Those, some of those guys are crazy. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> straight up. Yeah, exactly. I've still got my PA. I love my pro <laughs> Yeah. That thing is still great to fish from. Yeah, Standing you have up the and hooping. Or the 14? I have the 14. The 14. Yeah. And Stand up hooping on the pro angler. You can, you can pull on that thing. Not only uh, pull on it, but I've got a small Scotty um, puller mounted on that no thing. No way. That's yeah, so it's a little power puller. I've got it mounted power on that Power puller. Too. Yeah. Wow. So I can use my 200-foot lines and go out there and go hoop net in the, in the deep On spots. On the kayak. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's super As you cool. can hear, we have a great show lined up for you today. Lots going on here. Lots to talk about with our lobster guru, Jim Sellers. You're not talk, You're not kidding, man. Between talking kayak fishing, talking lobster fishing, all the other great stuff going on, it's going to be a very fun show, and I can assure you it's going to be a busy one, too. If you want to get through it, we would love to hear from you. And there's two ways you can do it if you want to reach us on Let's Talk Hookup. First is with our local line, and that's the line that we have open right now. There's one line open in the building. It's 858 area code 457-1090. Again, 858-457-1090. It's open right now. You can also try us on our toll-free number. It's full right now, but there's going to be plenty of shots to get through on that one. That's 877-792-1090. One more time, 877 877- Seven nine two ten ninety. Not only are we talking all kinds of fishing, talking fun, kayaking, lobsters today. Jim has brought us some awesome prizes. Thanks to the great generosity of our friends up at Promar and Jim. We've got a couple of really cool prizes for two lucky callers at the end of the show today. First of which is a six pack of those great Promar Live Deception jigs. It's a really cool pack of of jigs for a color anchovy, mackerel, sardine jigs. Very, very cool pack. Yeah, it's awesome. Very, very cool prize for one lucky caller. Then another lucky caller is going to win a full hoop net accessory pack, and it's really cool. It's got the brand new gloves. It's got LED lights for your floats. It's got reflective tape for marking your buoys, headlights, lobster gauge, bait cage. I mean, really, really cool hoop net pack for another lucky caller at the end of the show today. So a couple of great prizes. Again, if you want to get through, talk to Jim. Get us on the phone, 858 457-1090 457-1090 or 877-792-1090 and we come back we're going to be taking your phone calls lots of great information coming your way you stay tuned you're listening to southern california sport fishing voice let's talk hook up on the mighty 1090 here's john ireland for rancho leonero ranch is small you know it's very personal very intimate I don't think there's anywhere else that you could have the old Baja feel and have all the miles of beachfront, the palapa roofs and the stone walls. There's not a room that you don't have some kind of ocean view. You don't give up any amenities at the ranch. It's just very rustic. You know how when you cook outdoors it tastes better? Well, that's Rancho Leonero. It just tastes better. We have paddle boards. We've got kayaks. We've got snorkeling equipment, of course. We've got 12 super pongas. We have dive ships. We've got over 40 kayaks at the hotel. We've got all accurate equipment, very top of the line. And um, when the fishing's good, we'll freeze your fish, pack it all up, send it home with you. People love it. They'll come back five, six times a year. That's the highest accolade we can get. 1-800-646-2252. 646-Baja. And RanchoLandAero.com. It's unique. At Dawson & Associates Insurance Services, we recommend travel insurance for your next trip. Plans include trip cost cancellation, emergency medical evacuation, and medical expenses. For the frequent traveler going at least 100 miles from home, we have an annual plan, including foreign and domestic travel that insures every trip you make for an entire year for only $267. We guarantee the lowest prices on all our travel insurance products. Call Bob or Christy at 619-460-5615 or to view prices or apply online, visit safariglobaltravel.com. That's safariglobaltravel.com. Have you ever imagined casting a fly or a lure on one of the most beautiful and productive rivers in Alaska? At Katmai Lodge, you can catch up to all five species of Pacific salmon. The king, sockeye, chump, pink, and silver salmon, along with rainbow trout, arctic grayling, 
Dolly Varden, and other native stream fish. When anglers dream of trophy salmon and trout, the Alagnac River is their destination, and Katmai Lodge is the premier base camp. Being the original river-based lodge on the Alagnac gives the facility a leg up on the competition. Both experienced and novice anglers have rated Katmai Lodge and its knowledgeable guides as the best of the best. Katmai Lodge is remote, yet offers all the amenities of a first-class lodge. During your Alaska visit, you'll see amazing wildlife, brown bears, caribou, eagles, moose, otters, and much more. Schedule a day trip on their private De Havilland Otter Float Plane and visit the world-famous Brooks Falls. Book online at katmai.com or call 1-800-330-0326. That's katmai.com or call 1-800-330-0326 for the fishing adventure of a lifetime. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Phones are packed up. One line available in the entire building. If you want to get through, it's 858-457-1090. A popular guy, this Jim Salazar guy. Yeah. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Sounds good. Why don't we start it off this morning with Don. He's calling us from Woodland Hills. What's up, Don? Good morning. Hey, guys. Good morning. Thanks so much for taking my call. Thank you. Um, first, I just wanted to thank Pete, you, and Rick, and all your guests um, for this year. This, I was reflecting uh, while hooping with Brandon Hayward on uh, Monday while we were in between sets, and my catching uh, percentage has gone up so much. I've had so much fun because of you guys and all of your guests and all your sponsors, and I just wanted to make sure I didn't, didn't forget to say thank you. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate that. How'd you do with Brandon? You know what? We had, we had an awesome trip. I mean, there would be some people that would say it was too rough, it rained, it was clear. Uh, you know what? Being on the water is part of the experience. And just with the lighting around Catalina Island and the sunset and just, you know, everything else, along with the lobster we caught. And we had a very, very, very good trip. Good so for I'm, you. I'm happy with berries. what we had. Yeah, that's a great And, time. you know, you guys were talking about that ace line hauler. Yeah. Oh, my God. What could you do without that thing? I mean, how could you do that? I mean, you, I mean unless you're, you're like, does young. He have, does he have the bulldog on that? No, he doesn't have the bulldog. Oh, he's got to yeah. get that. I told line. him about the bulldog. I don't think he's had time to put the bulldog. That thing on. just coils that rope yeah, the right. The bulldog feet. is yeah. definitely a nice feature. I love it. That's so cool. Well, Don. I need to find out what the bulldog was because I, I thought the hauler was great, but that leads to my question. Um, I took a pair of short pump gloves, and they were not adequate for pulling on the line. So uh, to keep my uh, fingertips from being frayed and raw when I get back from a trip, what kind of gloves do I need to get, Jim? Um, the Promar gloves are pretty good. I, the, you know, the fish cleaning gloves, the yellow ones or the orange ones, they're really loose, and I, I think they get caught up in the rope and stuff, and I, I find them a little clumsy. I like those tighter-fitting ones that are, have the, uh, they're blue. the blue vinyl on the yeah, bottom, like a rubber, like rubber yeah, coated on work. the bottom. And they're inexpensive, and you just, like, when they start to wear, you just... But when it comes to sorting the lobsters and really handling them, these new insulated gloves that oh, Promark yeah. just came out with are really, really cool. They're like the ones they use. You see the guys on the, like on the, uh, um, what's that crab show? Deadliest, Deadliest, Deadliest Catch. catch. The, yeah. You know, those big, the big tall gloves that yeah. come up. I like the ones they use in Alaska. Sure. Yeah. And, for ha- and they're thicker and they're fleece lined. And for handling, the, Ooh, oh, yeah. man, nice. for handling the lobsters on these nights like this, it's really, really a cool set of gloves. Yeah. It's a good secondary you set need of to gloves. You get a set of those to, yeah. to Brandon. Yeah. 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 Please. Well, yeah. And, 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 people and what did you forget have... is. Yeah. Is is how spiny spiny lobsters oh, are. Oh yeah, right? you have, do you have little sores on your hands? And how adept they are at catching your fingers oh, when they yeah. flip their tail in there. Oh yeah, they're good That's at right. it. That's right. So um, anyway, hey Don, I'm glad you had a, a great trip with Brandon, and and thank you for all the kudos for this year, and thanks for supporting our sponsors and making Let's Talk Hook Up happen. We sure appreciate it. Thank, you, thank you guys, and right. we will talk to you in the new year. Absolutely. Thanks, Don. Hey uh, Jim, explain the bulldog for those that don't know what the, the bulldog right. is for. Uh, Ace line hauler. Well, the ace line hauler has um, a double pulley and a uh, an outer pulley and then a big pulley. They're, the double pulleys are two little small pulleys. Basically, you wrap your rope in the outside pulley, which is on a little short arm 
around the big pulley, and then you can do a, a wrap around one of the smaller pulleys. What the bulldog does is it takes off these smaller pulleys that put tension on the rope, and it has a spring-loaded Dalrin wheel. So you pull this Dalrin wheel back, thread over the outside pulley where the arm is, around the big pulley, and then let this spring-loaded Dalrin wheel go against your rope. And what it does is it has a little chute, about a four-inch aluminum chute on the bottom, like a, a half circle or a half pipe kind of a chute. And when the rope hits it, it just it puts the pressure on the rope to pull it up, and then it hits that chute, and it coils it right at your feet. So it's hands-free. Hands-free, 200 feet of rope. You just tap you it just once in a while. And it, that's it. <laughs> Here, somebody, <laughs> hold, somebody hold my cocktail. The hoop's, that, the hoop's getting close. <laughs> exactly. And then you just watch for that float to come up and lean over, turn off the motor, and pull it in. That's Some so cool. people like it. Some people I don't. Some people like don't. it. Some people are dart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he, he, oh no, no. Well, dart, dart doesn't go that deep. I think dart. Yeah. Dart's for been shallow hooping, water, maybe for know. shallow water under sixty feet. A lot of guys, especially if you're doing the flat nets, which are really, really productive for the San Diego area in that shallower water. If you're doing the flat nets, uh, you want to really have some speed, and you only get 150 feet a minute out of the. Uh, the ace line hauler, which is pretty fast when you consider 200 feet a line, because you can pull 200 feet a minute, but you slow down to about 100 feet a minute after about 100 <laughs> feet a line. So, yeah. you know, so that ace line hauler is just consistent with our conical style of nets. It works really good. But with the flat nets, you really want to get some speed on it. So I could see doing it by hand. But I'm going to disagree with you on the 60 feet. I, I'm 10 feet or, or more. I'm ace line hauling. <laughs> well, I just say I just say 60 feet because I I'm so deep anyway. I yeah. I put 200 foot lines on my first haul this year and I haven't taken them off. Pull multiple sets from 40, 50, 60 feet. Yeah, you're wearing your arm. Oh, you're down. sore. You're yeah. It, man. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. You, you want to be the guy driving Even the boat. Even a young guy like Rick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, let's go ahead and jump back in the phone. You got it, man. How about we jump back in on this? This time we're going to talk to Todd, who's calling us from San Diego this morning. Good morning, Todd. Welcome to the show. Good morning, guys. Happy holidays. You too, Todd. Hey, my question for Jim. Um, Last time I was out in Mission Bay, I ended up with 40 short, just like everybody else, it seems like. And uh, I was wondering, you know, how long it takes the lobsters to molt given the ocean temperature? That's a good question. Yeah, great one. Well, the warmer the water is, they say the the more often they molt. Um, and uh, that also brings up another subject. When you pull those shorts up, if you break an antenna or you break a leg, they're going to have to regenerate that leg or antenna. They can do it, and it won't kill them, but what happens is it slows down the molting process. So if you break the antenna, he's going to expend all his energy rebuilding that antenna rather than molting and getting uh, 20% bigger or 15% bigger. So don't grab them from the antennas when you're Be gentle with them, them is what I'm saying. When you take them off the bait cage or the bait tube that you're you if they're eating the bait intently, don't just rip them off of there. Gently take them off because you want these guys to grow up. It takes them about seven years to get to legal size, which is uh, three and a quarter inches on the carapace, and that allows them to uh, reproduce uh, a couple of times. Seven years? Yeah, seven years. Wow. Just uh, Calico is about the same thing, too, I think. So if you have a five-pounder, how, how old is that? Oh, my gosh. They say some of those big lobsters, like the big ones that were being caught out of uh, uh, Long Beach Harbor the last few years, those eight, ten-pounders, they were saying those were 60, 50, 60 years old. Wow. Which no brings kidding. up an interesting point because the EPA wasn't around in those days. So that's a lot, a lot of pollution that was in those early days yeah. just dumped in the harbors. Yeah. So you might want to take that into consideration when you're thinking about taking those bigger lobsters. Yeah, indeed. I think I'd let them go. <laughs> uh, what about so a, a five pounder maybe would be fifteen years old, ten years old? I would guess older than that. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's Crazy. Amazing. Pretty unreal. Anyway, hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. You know, I, I want to go back again, and when you were talking about carefully handling the short lobster or or any lobster, for, um, I, a lot of times I'll see guys grab the antennas, and that's like. Almost instantly, those things are going to let those go. So that's kind yeah. Of they kind of it's they have a um, they have a de- uh, natural device that they use, and it actually um, cuts off their leg or their antenna and and separates it so that if a prey animal grabs their leg or their antenna, they can cut that thing off and separate it and get away from that prey that way. So put the gloves on, grab them by the carapace, gently on by the carapace, yeah, yeah, and if you have to. Pull them off of the bait cage or the bait tube. Have the other person you're working with or with your other hand lift each leg off of there gently and work get them off, off of there. Slow. Yeah, work them off slowly. Yeah. And if you're a diver, 
don't grab them by the antennas out of the rock. Uh, it's tough because, you know, you're I reaching know. in there to get them and yeah. with those more eels I and know. all the other critters yeah, around. You know, that's what divers, <laughs> the divers are tough. Oh, they're tough on them. That's yeah. Most of the ones we see with uh, broken antennas, I think, are probably from divers. divers right? Yeah, for sure. All right, 858-457-1090 open right now. Gabe in Carson City, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Gabe. Good morning. Hey, Rick. Um, Jim, uh, really appreciate uh, all that you guys have done over the year. Uh, it's fun being up here in uh, northern Nevada. I used to be down in San Diego, and I still get to check in with you guys. And and, and some of the stuff that you share with us are, is relatable to the lakes and the streams up here. That's cool. Really happy that you've incorporated fly fishing Indeed. into some of your reports, and I uh, hope you guys have a great new year. Hey, Gabe, so are you listening to us on the Mighty 1090 app? Or are you listening yeah, to us? Absolutely. On... Okay. Very Every good. Saturday, Sunday. That's oh, right. right. That's cool. And is it a little cold up there today in Carson City? Yeah, it's a balmy 11 degrees. Oh, oh my God. No. Gabe, no, get your butt back down here, yeah. dude. That's not right. Not a lot of fishing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, great, Gabe. Well, thanks for listening, and we sure appreciate that. Uh, kudos for uh, listening on our Mighty 1090 app. So let's go over the multiple ways you can listen to Let's Talk. Hook I love that app. That's what I live. use, a PV. Yeah. Yeah. You can listen live right here on the Mighty 1090. You can listen. You can download the app on your Android or uh, iPhone device, uh, um, whether it be an iPad or whatever, um, and you can listen live on that. Or you can also listen to podcasts. Right. Uh, you can download the podcast on our website, hookup1090.com. You can go to the archives section, and you can go to uh, either the listen live right on the front, or or you go to the podcast section. And you can download right right into the podcast. Those section. archives are great. To, subscribe to iTunes. You can listen to that. Right. so many different. Ten ninety is a broadcast through Cox Communications on one of their channels. Okay. You know, I know that's how Uncle Roy listens to the show via the TV every, every morning. Uh, right. You know, just one of the one of the one thousand channels, but you know, just streams everything that is on ten ninety. So yeah. if you're in San Diego, you know, Southern California, Cox Communications. I know that's another way. All right, iPhone's the easy one, or the the uh, the, the the iPhone or Android app. It's yes. just it's so easy, and that's what Dad you're does. Listening live. You know, yeah, if you're listening live, you just. just Push a button, and, and yeah. there it goes. Works good in the kayak, yeah. too, especially you if you go. have one of those uh, Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. If you don't have a, an Android or an iPhone device, you can listen on your computer. Go to the front page of our website, hookup1090.com. Just click on the little antenna on the front page of the, of, of the website, and that will uh, get you right to the live uh, stream from via computer there too. So multiple ways you can listen exactly. around the world to Let's Talk Hook Up there, and we sure appreciate everybody that does. Eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety open right now. How about next up? We talk to Hills, who's called us from Ventura this morning. Good morning, Hills. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning, guys. Good morning, uh, Pete and Rick and uh, Jim Salazar. Good morning, Good morning. Hills. Hey, uh, so what I'm interested that Jim may know about is. Um, on the lobster, the commercial lobster gear, actually, because I'm in Ventura here. Um, there's so much gear that is now in in the on the close to the beach where the surfers are, like getting ready or stuck in it. And I'm just wondering, um, are they required to clean that gear up? And like, is there like an escape hatch or something? Um, or are those things just like death? You know, Death Stars for lobsters. <laughs> they they can be a Death Star, but they do have a uh, degradable um, uh, latch on there and um, uh, rings on the uh, door, so that uh, after it's set in the uh, salt water for a while, it will degrade and that door will fall off, so that any trapped critters in there oh. can get out. Like if the line breaks or something like or that. Storms is usually what happens. It's usually bad storms that hit them and, and these swells and stuff and the winds that force their gear uh, in or that uh, they lose their gear that way. And that's yeah. most of the time how that happens. But yeah, they're they're supposed to be uh, uh, degradable. Um, last latches on there that uh, that uh, open up and uh, let anything trapped in there out. Um, but uh, if you see any any gear out there that doesn't look like it's being taken care of and it's not a float on it or you see it underwater, um, you might want to take a look at it and uh, and report it. Um, you know there are uh, there are poachers out there. Yeah, and the other thing I might mention too is that, um, and I've seen it, I've done it. Um, there uh, a lot of times you'll see guys on paddle boards or or, or surfboards uh, poaching lobster traps. They'll have a mask on or. Or they'll they'll drag the trap inside. That's poaching. 
That's yes. going after somebody's livelihood. Exactly. So they're making their living. And and and, and it's also they're going to likely lose the travel. Let's if hope they don't see, get caught. If you see that, I hope they do get. You caught. call yeah. Caltip, and I've done it before. Yeah. I've seen it. I've called Caltip, and um, fortunately, I, I just heard a story that there was one guy that was just abusive of it in Sunset Cliffs, and they nailed him. Nailed him with seven hundred shorts. In shorts. He wasn't what? even taking yeah. the legals. He no. was taking shorts. Yeah, oh and my he's, gosh. he's in big trouble. Oh, yeah. good, wow. good, good, good. Seven hundred. So, what a. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so, so if you see, you're a surfer um, or a kayaker and you see somebody poaching, report them to Caltip because those guys are on it and they'll get them. Definitely. And and if, if you befriend any of the wardens, try and get their card, their personal card from them. And if you know them in the area, it, it's much more efficient. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Hills, have a great new year. Thanks a lot for all your support, and thanks a lot for the call this morning. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. More your phone calls, more great information. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro is home to L.A.'s finest open party fleet, including overnights on the Freedom, Catalina Freelance on the Pursuit, half-day trips on the Monte Carlo, and three-quarter day trips on the Native Sun. Plus, you can charter the Ultra, Spectra, and True Line. There is always plenty of free parking and a fully stocked tackle store. Take advantage of the Wednesday specials on the Pursuit in Monte Carlo, and kids fish free with a paid adult on the afternoon half-day. 22nd Street Landing Sport Fishing in San Pedro. Call 310-832-8304 or book online at 22ndstreet.com. For over five decades, Lee Palm Sport Fishing has set the standard in long-range fishing that they pioneered long ago. The Red Rooster 3 sets a new standard of excellence. The Red Rooster 3 is one of the most modern, quiet, and fastest long-range vessels in the fleet. They have handpicked the finest crew to make your trip a memorable one. The Red Rooster 3 offers trips from 3 to 18 days and runs year-round to the best fishing spots on the planet. Ride the Red Rooster 3 once and you'll be back again. Call the Red Rooster 3 at 619 224 57 or see them on the web at redrooster3.com. It's time to talk about great gear from Shimano. You know, Bay Bass season, we talked about it yesterday, the big Bay Bass seminar at Dana Landing on January 16th. And, uh, uh, you know, no better reel than a Shimano Corrado or Shimano Calcutta, right, Rick? Yeah, the beauty of Bay Bass and Shimano is they have really good gear for every angler and every budget. You know, a really nice reel that's very comfortable that'll be great for Bay Bass and still be able to go catch all your calico bass and heck, even yellows and bonita and stuff afterwards is uh, Corrado. Not a, not a terribly expensive reel, crazy good gearing, smooth, great free spooling. The nicest out there, probably that Calcutta D. They're just great Major line capacity, high torque, and if you want the smoothest, raddest reel around, it's that Calcutta Conquest. The Conquest, yeah, pretty <laughs> amazing. You match that with one of those great Shimano rods, like a one of the new Terramar series. Uh, Waxwing Terez, maybe. Oh, There's lots man. of great options. So many good choices for Bay Bass. So check it out at your local Shimano dealer, or check out Shimano.com. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half, three-quarter, and full-day trips available. Check out the full-service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing. And it's all run by fishermen for fishermen. 1717 Quartz. Rivera Road, just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay. Book online at seaforthlanding.com. You are listening to the home of the Aztecs. With that slam dunk, that's what I'm talking about. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. All right, we have Mr. Jim Salazar, our lobster guru and a Promar representative and Howie Kayak representative, talking, fishing here. Time to talk 
The catch report, Ricky. You got it, man. It's time for the catch report, which is sponsored by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Long range season, it's on. We keep talking about it, and I, I really, really hope that you do it when you're going on your long range trip. Like we say all the time, you know you got your trip coming up. It, even if your trip's not coming up until March, you know you're going on a you're going a long range on the on the Royal Polaris. You just call Sean and Rosie. Hey, my trip is leaving on February 1st, and I want to make sure that my processing is in order. I like one pound packs. I want this. I want that. They'll take care of everything for you, First and they make five. it so so easy and you know the fisherman's processing product speaks for itself i know i got a uh, several of my fish done in that smoked fish and some jerky and for christmas i gave out a pack of smoked fish and jerky to everybody it was the total hit what for christmas about time the yeah tuna burger oh dude awesome <laughs> <laughs> awesome they have so much great stuff i really encourage you to check them out and and like pete says do all the fun stuff the jerky the smoke the burgers is really cool and a great way to do it if you want more information you can friend fisherman's processing on facebook just look up fisherman's processing or for more details you can always check fisherman's processing Dot com. We're going to start off in the catch port up at Dana War Sport Fishing. Talk to the man, Captain Brian Willie's on the line. What's up, Willie? Hey, guys. What's happening this morning? How are you? Doing great. Good morning. Hey, Happy New Year good, to good. you. Good. Hey, uh, thank you. Yeah, well, hey, this is just a, a quick short report. Uh, you know, we kind of had a shortened week, we obviously, with the Christmas holiday and uh, you know, a little bit of that cold wind. A day or two kind of kept us off the water. But uh, just stand, uh, standard winter cod fishing is pretty much uh, what went down on our three-quarter day trips this week. Uh the key down there uh, is been, has been finding the right rock away from these big areas of red crab. You know, these big part of putting the fish in the bags has been uh, finding those little stones that aren't all piled up with red crab. That yellowtail that's down there, it's still roaming around over that hard bottom, but, you know, we haven't been able to get that stuff to react a, a lick at all. So it's been all cod, and uh, we'll fish that until it closes uh, Thursday night at midnight, I guess, right? That closes, and uh, we'll be able to start fishing some sculpin too as well down there. So, obviously, with that wind, uh, you know, the water temps did take a bit of a hit, and it cooled off pretty good. Uh, so, on our half-day stuff, primarily we've been targeting some sand bass and sheephead, you know, stuff that we can get bites out of in the cooler water. You know, the guys this morning said it's 56 when they are leaving the harbor. So, finally, in that, that cool realm. Uh, anyways, uh, and, yeah, like I said, Friday we'll be able to keep those sculpting, and we've been throwing a lot, back a lot of really nice ones. So, uh, we'll be able to kind of add that to our account. So, that's kind of it for us, just a, a short week, uh, kind of what you'd expect for, you know, the end of December. So if you guys want to hop on a trip with us this next week, call the landing office, phone number there, 949-496-5794. And, guys, let me just tell you, please take advantage of the Celeste Talk Hookup discount that we have on their webpage. You can link us right there on the link. It'll take you right over. There's a little code at the bottom of the ad on the on the uh, Let's Talk Hookup webpage, and you'll use that code to book. It'll save you 25% on a three-quarter day trip or a half-day trip. So please, guys, take advantage of that. Great and you can obviously yeah. check us out at DanaWorf.com. I want to remind everybody, too, what you mentioned last week, that cool new app that you guys created for Dana Wars Sport Fishing. I think that's such a cool idea. Fish counts, book trips, just general information, quick, easy, one-button, full app, everything that is Dana Wars Sport Fishing. You bet. Yep, it's been it's been real uh, useful. A lot of people have uh, you know loaded on their phones and kind of taken advantage of it. So they can give you a fish count. It'll take you right over to book. You know, you can get the code off the Let's Talk Hookup webpage, let's say, and click link over on the app, and boom, you're good to go. That's so. rad, Willie. Yeah, awesome stuff. And like you say, you save a lot of money uh, just right on the front page of our website, hookup1090.com. Just click on that Dana Wharf banner and uh, get the code and uh, go online and buy your ticket, and you can save some big bucks. And you there can you use go. that over and over again, right? It's not a one-shot deal. It's not a one-shot deal. Nope. You want to come fishing three days this week, uh, use the code three times. You're good to go three different Sweet. days. So. That's rad, Willie. Yep. Right on. All right. All right. Once again, how do we find you? Thanks, Pete. The number at the office there is 949-496-5794. Or, again, just link us right there through the Let's Talk Cook Up webpage. I'll take you right over. So pretty right. simple. Guys, happy New Year to you. Happy New Year and to we'll you. we'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much uh, for all your great reports and being there for us every Sunday morning, Willie. Hey, we appreciate it. We'd like to get the word out and let people know what's going on up here. So yeah. thanks for uh, giving us the time. We certainly appreciate we'll it. We'll do it again next year. How's that sound? <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Let's All do right. It. Very good. Thanks very much. Well, that's going to wrap up our catch port momentarily. Hopefully we'll hear a little more later in the show. But the end, sponsored in part by Dana Landing in Mission Bay, your one-stop shop for everything you need to go fishing. And 
whenever Johnny and when Dwayne was in here yesterday, it always reminds me when, when we read this spot, it, it is the truth. They are as complete of a spot as a private boater could ever want to go from the tackle store, the full deli, trips and six-pack charters with that great new blackjack. I mean, they are as dialed in as you could be. Boat parts, food, ice, beer, soda, whatever you need. It is a true one-stop shop. And don't forget to check out the, all the great freshwater tackle at East County Bait and Tackle. It's another great shop, newly expanded, lots of great stuff. All the freshwater tackle and live bait that you need for a great day in the lake. Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld, next to the Dana Lawn Tramp in Mission Bay. And then East County Bait and Tackle, it's at the end of the 67 Freeway at Maple View and Lakeside. Check out DanaLanding.com for more info. And i got to remind you, uh, mark your calendar, January 16. It's uh, less than three weeks away is the big live broadcast at Dana Landing there, followed up by a big seminar at Fast Lane Kayaks uh, for the Bay Bass Tournament. And if you, even if you're fishing or not fishing in the San Diego Anglers Bay Bass Tournament the following weekend, you're welcome to join in on the seminar. You can learn a lot about Bay Bass fishing from some of the top experts there. So be sure to check that out. Saturday, January 16th, starting a horse at 7 a.m. Gundy Gunderson, surf guru extraordinaire. Good morning, Gundy. Did you say spotted bay bass, Pete? Spotted bay bass, buddy. <laughs> Happy it's New on. Year, Gundy. Hey, that's the highlight of my uh, my report this week, you know. A little bit of uneven conditions, you know. We're having some water turnover, some cooler water. But on that turned over water, it's a little dirtier, and it's drawn a lot of bait in. So that's kind of been an interesting factor here. It, it was a little bit tough on the beaches this week, but the best bet was in the bays, the harbors, and the inlets. Big Fish reported that striped bass, we talked about this last week, on that full moon, popped up again. The fish were chasing bait in that San Gabriel River channel all the way back up to the bridge there. They were chasing bait. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. about It's a warm water outfall. There's a power plant there. And Liz spent a lot of time as a grommet, you know, fishing Bonita in there and stuff. So it's a really fishy area. But it's really amazing they're saying there was big schools of striped bass, 8 to 12-pound fish, and they're taking uh, white swim baits was the ticket for the guys who were Johnny on the spot there. Another hot spot was the San Diego Lagoons. Pacific Coast reported terrific spotted bay bass fishing. And I heard this from Long Beach, Newport. All these harbors are really going good on the spotted bay bass. Catch and release. They've been reporting 10 to 12 spotted bay bass in the session, just walk, walking the shoreline, throwing small swim baits. And uh, we don't want to keep those fish, so I always encourage catch and release. But with the little weather outside, the guys turn inside, and, hey, we find some more fishing. So really interesting stuff on that striped bass. And with the conditions like they are, I imagine those fish will be around uh, through the winter here. You would think so, absolutely. And, uh Gosh, it's just, you know, the, the advantage of doing the surf is, is it's a yeah. year-round fishery here in Southern California. You know, I'm dating myself here, Pete, but when, when I was a grommet, my mom used to drop me and my buddy off at that San Gabriel River Channel with a bunch of day-old bread. And so we'd spread the bread, start sprinkling in the water, get the smelt all around us, and then we'd look up the channel towards the beach, and we'd see the bonita come running out, and they're spraying the bait all over, and so we're snag and smelt and fly lining and i tell you training wheels yeah thank you for all yeah, your man. great uh, reports throughout the whole year we really appreciate your time and your effort and we'll look forward to another year of it in 2016 hey it's my pleasure pete and i wish everyone a fantastic 2016 and uh It'll be hard to top this season, but, hey, we're going to try, aren't we? Yeah, You're the man, Gundy. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All Talk right, to you next year, Have buddy. a good week. All right. And those great articles in Western Outdoor News, too. Oh, yeah. yeah, Western Outdoor News articles. Keep those up, man. You doing more of those? Yes. Yeah, all right. Yes, we're doing this. We do the long-range report. Yeah, Gundy covers all the long-range stuff. I and then we do, yeah. we do the surf fishing report, too. So, uh, it's uh, yeah, plenty of info in there, too. What a season. Good trip, Rick, too. I didn't get a chance to tell you that. Yeah, thanks, buddy. <laughs> all right. Gundy, all right, have a good year, too. See you, Gundy. Talk to you soon. All right, very good. Speaking of Western Outdoor News, be sure to check out this week's edition of Western Outdoor News. Of course, all those long-range reports, lots of good stuff in there, and uh Lots of good fresh water as well as salt water information. You'll have to scope out, like, one of the very last pages. There's a picture of a guy with a barred pargo that is the biggest barred pargo I have ever seen in my life. They just 
they just shouldn't get that big. I mean, obviously, it's a great photo and a great angle, and everybody knows, you know, the, the low angle fish pushed oh, out and everything. Man. But still, is that not rad? That's or a what? diver. Yeah, that thing's yeah. huge. Dude. The only way to get it out of the rocks. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the only way you get Yeah, you're not catching that thing on a rod and reel. Wow, that's incredible. That's yeah. a big one. 38.5 pounds. How about that? That's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check that out. It's this week's edition of Western Outdoor News. All right. Hey, we're going to jump right back into the phones. This time, we're talking to Cliff, calling us from Lakewood. Cliff, great to hear from you. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Pete, Rick, and uh, Jim. I met you, uh, Jim, over there at the Long Beach uh, CCA meeting that we had over there. Oh, that was a good meeting. We had like over 80 people there. We got over 30 new members. That was nice. a really good meeting. Very good. Yeah, Jim and I are both on the board for CCA, and it's uh, really great to see all the support coming through, right, Jim? Yeah, as a matter of fact, the San Diego chapter has uh, their first open meeting coming up on January 21st at Carl Strauss, yes. which is at 9675 Scranton Road in San Diego. The doors are going to open at 5, and the meeting is from 6 to 8. They'll probably have a great raffle. We can have a real raffle now, I believe, because we've been in business now as CCA for over a year. And that's uh, a great location, too. Yeah. It's right here in Mira Mesa, right down the street from where the radio station is here. Right, easy to get to it near the 5, 805 split. A beautiful location, and uh, thanks to our buddy Steve Pazel, who's the president of the organization there, putting that all together with one. He's, yeah. got, he's got inside contacts with Carl Strauss. Well, nice. He's, the president, so, of, like this, he's right? the president of the San Diego chapter. Of the San Diego chapter. Of CCA. Right. Yeah, exactly. So That's going to be a good meeting. About adding weight to your nets, do you put it on the very bottom uh, hoop or the middle hoop, and what, what do you use for a weight? I use 3 H chain. I like, well, I, you know, I used to use chain, and then uh, Jim from Leadmasters came out with these uh, hoop net heavies, he calls them. They're each one pound. Um, he and Mark Wish worked on them, I think. They uh, are molded in a sort of a little uh, circular kind of a shape to fit the edges, the outside edges of the net. And they have two little holes on each side so that you can put a zip tie through them so you can take them off and put them on if you're not if you're not needing them and you're pulling by hand. But uh, I really like them. They're one-pound weights. You can put as many on there as you want. How many do you put on? I usually just use three. Three. Just three pounds is usually all I'm using. Um, every once in a while, I'll add a little bit more weight because I like to hoop the edge of the canyon. And the edge of that canyon, it's amazing what the current can be like down deep. Mm -hmm. And you have no idea when you're up on the no, surface. There'll be no current on the surface. and As a diver, you know that. It could yeah. be ripped. You literally have to hold on to the bottom as a diver to keep from being pulled in. Sure. So uh, on those nights, I'll add a little more weight to it. But uh, chain works great. Galvanized chain. You can put it on the inside of the hoop net so it won't scratch up your gel coat. Yeah, it works good. Yeah, so put it on. That's another tip is put it on the inside so it doesn't mess up the boat. Exactly. Right? So it won't yeah, scratch yeah, your gel coat. Very good. And yeah, where do you yeah. put the hoop net heavies? The hoop net heavies uh, are on the outside of the outside of the uh, yeah. nets. Yeah, so it's just the way they're designed. Yeah, but uh, but weight is good. Weight is good um, when you need it. Um, I use the Ace Line hauler, so I have it on there all the time. If you're pulling by hand, you might want to be a little selective about when you add weight. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it that much call. heavier to pull, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, Cliff. Happy New Year to you. Thanks a lot for the call. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. More of your phone calls and more great information. we got more of the Lobster Guru. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Information is the key to success, and inside information is even better. When it comes to fishing, inside information is critical, and that's what FishDope.com delivers. FishDope.com really does help you catch more fish and save fuel. FishDope.com is the only SST service with a satellite oceanographic PhD on board, the only fish finding service with a spotter plane. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. FishDope.com boasts the largest largest code group anywhere, covering sport boats, commercial boats, and private boaters. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. What I'm telling you is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, good luck. Membership costs less than 40 gallons of gas for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, stay tuned for the special code to save $20 on a Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. 
Van Warmer Resorts have become a destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. What a tuna and yellowtail season last year. Many say the best in 30 years. Could this season be even better? Don't be caught without the right gear. Now is the time to stock up on the trolling lure that proved to be the best. X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala. Every X-Wrap Magnum runs perfect right out of the box. They all have extreme action and a controlled deep diving aggressive swimming motion. The large diving lip partners with premium VMC hooks and an irresistible rattle. The X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala can be trolled at high speeds without rolling or kicking out at depths to 15 feet. Bottom line, the x Rap Magnum is the ultimate trolling lure for Southern California and Baja saltwater fishing. With a textured translucent body, internal holographic foil, and 3D holographic eye, x Rap Magnums are irresistible to saltwater game fish. Available in a variety of colors and sizes. No matter what you choose, the fish can't resist x Rap Magnum by Rapala. Ask your local tackle dealer which is the hottest color in size and start catching more fish. See the entire line at Rapala.com. XFRF 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. The best NFL coverage is right here. Caught inside the pylon for a touchdown. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Your hook is one of the most important parts of your fishing tackle, and that is why you should use the hook that sets the standard for quality and innovation. Gamakatsu, as Japan's leading hook manufacturer and growing at an amazing pace. Gamakatsu is responsible for introducing a unique tempering process to give Gamakatsu hooks superior strength and durability. Plus, the conically needle-honed points stay sharp. Gamakatsu offers a hook for every fishing situation, including the finest one-piece ringed hooks, light wire, standard and heavy-duty live bait hooks, and the popular Nautilus circle hooks. Get Gamakatsu hooks at your favorite tackle store and stay connected to that fish of a lifetime. It was another awesome year for fishing in San Diego, and it seems to still be going strong. I've talked to people that continue to get into tuna and yellowtail offshore. It was another awesome year for Ford, too. Once again, Ford is America's favorite brand. Just take a look at last year's sales figures. It's right there in black and white. If the car you're driving is six, seven, eight years old, it's really time to get into something new because the technology in these new Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs is nothing short of impressive. You wouldn't want a cell phone with 8-year-old technology, would you? So why keep driving a car with old technology? Now's the time to stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer and check out the latest innovations and designs, like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on your new F-150. You just turn a little knob on the dash, and it steers your trailer exactly where you want it to go. Trust me, backing in your boat will never be easier. Learn more at SanDiegoCountyFord.com or just stop by any San Diego County Ford dealer. They'll be glad to hook you up. Happy New Year from your friends at Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Hi, this is Doug Kern, and we have a lot to look forward to. I will be making some great buys at the Big Las Vegas Tackle Show, gearing up for the Fred Hall Shows. And I always make some amazing deals to pass on to our customers. After last year's incredible season, the gang at Fisherman's Landing Tackle are excited for what this year could bring, and we will be ready for the shows. In fact, stop by today, and we will share some new product knowledge and pre-show deals. And make sure to see us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego or saltwatertackle.com. Just because it's winter does not mean there are no fish to catch. Fisherman's Landing is taking full advantage of the fishing opportunities this winter with half-day trips, three-quarter day Coronado Islands trips, day-and-a-half colonnette trips, and of course, long-range trips. We will be targeting yellowtail, tuna, rockfish, and more this winter. Check the website at fisherman'slanding.com or call us at 619-221-8500 for details and to book your trip. 